Okay, here we're going to look at trying to sketch some slope fields. We're going to look at trying to sketch some curves on this slope field given these different initial conditions. So I've typed in a differential equation into D field and I just took a screenshot of it so that I could draw on it and then we'll look at it on D field too at the end of the video. Okay, so I've got four different initial conditions here. So we have to pay attention to the scale on the axes. On the horizontal axis, here is our zero. And then on the vertical axis, our zero is here. So here's the origin. I'll just put a dot right there. And we want to sketch the curves through these different initial conditions. So y of zero equals two corresponds to the point here, corresponds to the point here at zero, two. And so if we want to think about that curve through there, the idea is not that you sketch something perfect, but that you can visualize generally what it looks like and tell the long-term behavior of the curve through that point. And so it's pretty easy to see if you follow that curve to the right, that's headed up. And then you can also sketch the backward trajectory. It's a little bit difficult to tell exactly kind of where it is at at the back part here, but you can tell forward trajectory anyway is up. And so one thing that it's pretty easy to see when you visualize that curve is that through that point, the y values tend to approach infinity as x grows. And it's difficult to see from just the picture here whether x can actually grow all the way to infinity or we run into some trouble. Before that, perhaps there's a vertical asymptote before x can grow very large here. But as x gets larger, All right, so let's look at one through the next point here at zero, zero, so at the origin here. And if we look at that curve through the origin, <laughs> if we look at that curve through the origin, see that that one also is going up to infinity. The backward trajectory is a little bit more difficult to place precisely. But for that one, y is also approaching infinity as x gets larger. So that's true for both of those curves. For y of 0 equals negative 2, however, we really have a different shape for that curve. So y of 0 equals negative 2, that's down here. And if you look at the curve that goes through there and just use these arrows to kind of sketch out what that curve looks like, you can see that that one is headed down. And the backward trajectory is there, pretty easy to see. So for this one, y appears to be approaching negative infinity as x gets larger. All right, and then one more to look at here. Let me go back to blue. For this one, y of 0 equals negative 1 half. So there's that point there. And there's not really a, 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 an arrow plotted through that point. So it's a little bit difficult to tell. And one thing that you might notice is that above that point, those, those arrows seem to be headed upward. And below that point, those arrows are pretty flat and then seem to be headed downward. So there's a splitting or a bifurcation that appears to be happening near there. And actually, if you look at the differential equation, I've typed it up here at the top, y prime equals y plus x times the quantity y plus 1 half. You'll notice that at y equals negative 1 half, that actually is a solution curve, a constant solution. y is equal to negative 1 half is a constant solution. You can see that from the differential equation. You can solve that one. Uh, that one's pretty easy. But also, if you just think about the slope, through that point, you get slope 0. So that is a place where I have a splitting. Above that line, my curves are headed in one direction. Below that line, my curves are headed in a different direction. And right there, I have a bifurcation. Y stays at negative 1 half as x gets larger. If you didn't have the equation, that would be hard to tell precisely from just looking at the graph. It does appear that there's some sort of splitting there, but it's hard to tell exactly what's happening exactly at negative 1 half, except you have the equation there. All right, I'm going to minimize this, and we will look at it on D field. So here I've graphed that on D field. Remember that when you want to graph these, you can go into solution and do keyboard input of initial value, and you can type in the values that you want there.
And let's just do our negative one half one here. We could do the others as well if I wanted, but, and there we go. All right, so uh, what x equals zero, y equals negative one half. That's not what it plotted. Plotted x equals zero, y equals zero. Okay, so <laughs> let's do negative 0 0.5. Maybe that's what it didn't like here with my fraction. And now let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so x equals zero, y equals negative 0 0.5. So you can see we've got that constant solution there. We could graph some others at some other points here, uh, trying to approach some of our other points that we used here and look at those solution curves. But the real important thing with this one is that bifurcation or that splitting at that initial condition of y of zero equals negative one half, where we've got different long-term behavior above that solution curve than we have below that solution curve. All right, and we will look at that idea of bifurcation in a lot of different examples later, so that's something to keep in mind, and when we look at some applications, those will be important to consider.